So the PlayStation 5 event lit the world on fire. The first look at Sony's brand new console that will be coming out in holiday 2020. There was a whole bunch of information that we learned about the PlayStation 5, everything from the design of the system to games that will be coming to the system. Of course, there's been new information since then. So I wanted to basically make a video talking about what we know so far about the PlayStation 5 in terms of price point and in terms of what games are going to be available at the launch of the system. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about what we know about the PlayStation 5 in terms of price point and in terms of games that are going to be available for the system in the launch window. So first off, let's talk about the price of the PlayStation 5, because obviously there are two different systems that will be available for the PlayStation 5. There is the standard version that, of course, has a disk drive on it that I will be purchasing. And then there's going to be an all digital system. And because of this, many people are now speculating that the PlayStation 5 standard model is going to be a bit more expensive than we thought it was initially going to be. It looked like Sony was trying to possibly hit that $400 price point, but because of the materials used for this system, it didn't seem like it was going to be feasible to do that of course xbox has been heavily rumored to be doing a all digital system as well with the xbox series x called the lockhart so it seems like this could be a new industry standard going forward now as far as these systems are concerned we actually got two leaks yesterday from two different websites talking about the price point of the playstation 5 and one of them i believe and one of them well i really don't the first one that we saw and is one that i do believe is a listing that went up for target now this listing was quickly taken down but target was evident taking pre-orders for the digital version of the PlayStation 5 with a $400 price point. And I think that's sort of what's in line with what to expect with this console generation. I honestly feel like the PlayStation 5 standard model is going to be $500 or more. So by introducing a cheaper all digital system, this could be a good entry point for people who don't necessarily care about physical media and physical collecting when it comes to their games. I of course will be avoiding this system because of a myriad of reasons I enjoy collecting physical physical games and I do question how much room is going to be on the hard drive for the system in order to download these games because obviously some of these next generation games are going to be very large but I do feel like this leaked target ad at $400 more than likely will be the price point of that system hopefully it'll be a little bit less it would be nice to see that at $300 but if that's what it is at $400 I definitely sort of understand now another listing that went up yesterday that I don't agree with is the play Asia listing now play Asia is a web website that does a lot of imports and exports on video games and play asia actually listed the standard edition of the playstation 5 at 700 dollars now there is no way in hell that the playstation 5 will launch at 700 dollars uh, play asia likes to do a lot of markups with their consoles and their video games sometimes so more than likely this is just sort of a placeholder where i believe target more than likely wasn't a placeholder there's probably some valid information backing that up but i don't think it's feasible for a console to launch at seven hundred dollars in the year 2020 because the video game consumer market just won't really accept it they have enough of a problem accepting a five hundred dollar price point i think seven hundred dollars would just be absolutely ludicrous so i'm not putting much stock into play asia's listing for the playstation 5 i think this is essentially just a placeholder and if the system price does come down which i believe it will i don't think it'll be a seven hundred dollar system i definitely think that they will just sort of reimburse people who may have pre-ordered it at this price point but yeah i definitely think that the digital edition of the system will be 300 to 400 dollars i think that 400 dollars listing from target might actually be very accurate but as far as the play asia listing is concerned i think 700 dollars is just way out of the ballpark and they're just sort of doing a random listing to just get people to purchase a playstation 5 and pre-order the playstation 5 through their website now, of course, during the PlayStation 5 presentation, we were also introduced to a whole myriad of games that will be available on the PlayStation 5 system. Some of these had release windows. Some of them didn't have release windows. Now, beyond that, we've actually had other confirmations of release windows for a lot of PlayStation 5 games as well. So I basically want to go over what we know is going to launch in 2020 for the PlayStation 5 that is confirmed, and then two wildcard picks that I think one of them has a good chance, and then one of them not so much. Now, when we're talking about the launch 
launch of the PlayStation 5, many are expecting this system to more than likely launch in the month of November. So anything that's listed as a 2020 release for the system, I believe is a launch title for the system. A launch window for a system is about two to three months after the system is released. So not necessarily all these games will be confirmed on day one, although we do have two games that are confirmed on day one, but all of these games will be releasing in 2020. So as far as I'm concerned, these are launch title games for the PlayStation 5. Now, the two games that we do have confirmed as available on day one for the PlayStation 5 is Fortnite, which of course will be on pretty much every system till the end of time. If you don't know what Fortnite is, I mean, what rock have you been living under? Obviously, this game will be shifting from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5 as stated by Epic Games. So this will be available on the PlayStation 5 on day one. If you're playing Fortnite on day one on your PlayStation 5. Why did you buy the system? Like there's other games that you're going to be able to play. And one of those games is actually a platformer that we were introduced to during the PlayStation 5 event. And that is Astro's Playroom. Now, of course, Astro is known for the Astro Bot game. That was a PlayStation VR game, which is kind of interesting because we haven't heard anything about PlayStation VR and the PlayStation 5 thus far. But Astro's Playroom will actually be preloaded on every PlayStation 5 console that is purchased. So this is a game that you will be getting for free. And honestly, I really like the look of this game. I thought it was a really cool looking platformer game. I love 3D platformers, and I think this game will be a very fun game to check out on the PlayStation 5 on day one. Definitely play this game over Fortnite. Now, as far as the other games are concerned, we have several titles that are confirmed for 2020 releases on the PlayStation 5. Some of these were included in the PlayStation 5 event. Some of them were actually not included because they've already been announced via other mediums. The first game I want to talk about is NBA 2K21. Now, this is listed as a fall release for the PlayStation 5, but since the system isn't coming out until holiday of 2020, like I said, more than likely a November time slot, I foresee this game releasing in probably the month of November. And of course, what we saw from NBA 2K21 definitely showed a lot of promise. There was a lot of cool effects that were going on as far as facial animations are concerned. A lot of nitty gritty details that maybe the average consumer wouldn't see, but a basketball fan really probably enjoyed that NBA 2K21 teaser that we got during the PlayStation 5 event. I know as a big NBA fan, I'm really looking forward to this game. I think it's going to be a true power progress of how the PlayStation 5 is able to handle things like new power. Sports games are actually pretty important with launches of new consoles because it really helps show that generational leap from console to console. So I think NBA 2K21 is going to be a big deal. The next game that we have confirmed for 2020 on the PlayStation 5 is Bug Snacks. Now, I really have no interest in this game whatsoever. I thought it looked kind of cute but it just didn't really resonate with me. It didn't really sync well with me. It wasn't a game that I was like, oh, I need to play this game on my PlayStation 5 when I get it. But Bug Snacks is also confirmed for a 2020 release date. So this will be a launch window title for the PlayStation 5. The next game is Observer System Redo, which is coming out in 2020. Now, this game was actually not in the PlayStation 5 press event, but it was confirmed by other mediums that it will be coming out in 2020 for the PlayStation 5. Now, this game originally released on current generation consoles, and this seems to be an enhanced version of that game. I actually played this game for a little bit on the Nintendo Switch. It's basically a cyberpunk sort of detective game. It's a pretty interesting game. I thought what we saw from the game, there was obviously some graphical enhancements and frame rate enhancements. And this version of the game versus the version that came out on current generation consoles. Once again, this isn't a huge title for the system or anything, but it is a pretty cool looking title. And I might end up checking this out as I did enjoy the original game when it came out on current generation platforms. Another game that was not at the PlayStation 5 event, but is confirmed for a 2020 release is Outriders. Now this is sort of a Destiny style game coming to us from Square Enix. Some of my friends actually got to go check this game out hands on at a Square Enix press event a couple months ago and the results seem to be somewhat positive i'm not really into destiny style games but i do think outriders does have potential on the playstation 5 because right now there's not many online multiplayer based games that will be coming out on the playstation 5 thus far that we have seen so far aside from games like fortnite so i feel like outriders could actually help fill a gap and fill a void that will be available on the playstation 5 when you get this system so a multiplayer based game sort of based along the lines of destiny 
Outriders I think has some sort of potential. A game that was originally announced at Bethesda's E3 2019 press event and is now confirmed as a PlayStation 5 timed exclusive is Deathloop. Now, I really liked what we saw from Deathloop. It's a first person shooter game with very interesting combat, very sort of fluid combat as well. And it just looks like a sort of unique take on the first person genre with time manipulation as a big factor in this game. You're basically trying to take out eight different characters that are basically trying to kill you. And of course you only have till midnight until do it. Now the graphics of this game, they weren't all that super impressive, but this is a PlayStation 5 timed exclusive and does have a concrete release window of a 2020 release. So this will be a launch title for the PlayStation 5 within the launch window of the system. And I could foresee this game being a lot of fun. Another game that is confirmed for a 2020 release is of course Godfall. Now there is no God of War coming out to the PlayStation 5 anytime soon that we at least know about. But I think Godfall sort of fills that action adventure space that is going to be a big deal on the system. Initially, I didn't think this game looked all that impressive, but when we saw this game during the PlayStation 5 press event, I actually sort of changed my tune about it. I really like the way the combat flows in this game. It looks very fluid and seamless. The graphics seem pretty nice as well. There's some really cool environments that you visit and a lot of interesting enemies that you'll be encountering in this game as well. I think this game is showing a lot of polish and a lot of promise. This could end up being a big sleeper hit on the PlayStation 5 and this is a PlayStation 5 exclusive that is confirmed for a 2020 launch meaning that this will be a launch title for the PlayStation 5 system and of course the final game is Spider-Man Miles Morales which has a holiday 2020 release window I could foresee this game launching day one on the PlayStation 5 now there has been some sort of speculation and a little bit of worry with this game as far as what this game actually is essentially this game is a standalone release game that is basically an expansion of the Spider-Man game that we saw on the PlayStation 4, but built with the PlayStation 5 in mind. Of course, you're not playing as Peter Parker, you are playing as Miles Morales. And we did get a glimpse of this game. Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4 was arguably one of the best looking games on the platform. And I really feel like Insomniac is going to be able to tap into that potential of the PlayStation 5 and make a very visually pleasing game. There's obviously going to be a lot of improvements in things like texture loading and whatnot that we of course have heard about since the introduction of the fast SSD in this system so I'm really interested to see because this game because I feel like this is going to be a technical showcase for the PlayStation 5 there's always a one or two games that come out on a Sony system that sort of push the graphics of the system on the launch of the system we've seen that with games like Killzone and Resistance and Infamous and I feel like Spider-Man Miles Morales is going to be that game that sort of pushes the envelope in terms of graphics when you are playing your PlayStation 5 now of course like I said I do have two wild card picks that I do want to talk about one game I feel could be potentially a 2020 release and one game I don't necessarily think is going to be the game I don't think is going to be a 2020 release is Horizon Forbidden West now we did get a great look at this game of course this game is the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn and this is the way that Sony ended their press conference for the PlayStation 5 event but there was no timetable given for the release of this game and I honestly foresee this game as a 2021 release maybe a spring or summer 2021 release because I feel like a game this size and of this magnitude is going to take a little bit longer than people maybe initially wanted. Sony, of course, does not care about talking about games that are a bit away as far as when they're going to come out. And I feel like Horizon Forbidden West is one of those games that's probably just needing a bit more time and a bit more development. So I don't think this is going to be a 2020 release. Now, one game I do feel could potentially be a 2020 release is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, because what we saw from this game was actually probably the most gameplay we saw from any any company during this PlayStation 5 event. We actually got an in-depth look at one of the levels of the game and how the gameplay mechanics are going to work, how the combat works, and some of the different environments that you're going to be in. This game seemed a lot further along than a lot of other games, even games that were pigeonholed for a 2020 release on the PlayStation 5. So I feel like this game does have potential to be a 2020 release and potentially be available on day one on the PlayStation 5. I really think it will be within the launch window of the system. I could be completely wrong on that but the amount of gameplay that we saw showed that this game is pretty far along in the progress as far as being developed so I think if any game that we didn't get a sort of listing for as far as a release window is concerned Ratchet and Clank a Rift Apart is definitely the game that I feel has the most potential to launch in 2020 for the PlayStation 5. 
All right, so that is everything we know so far about the PlayStation 5, what we've heard about the price point of it, and what games will be available in the launch window for the system. Of course, there are going to be more game announcements. The PC game show is actually today, so there'll probably be more stuff because a lot of this stuff is, of course, multi-platform that we'll be releasing on the PC as well. So we may get some more games that are being announced for the PlayStation 5 as well. But even if we don't, I think this is a very solid lineup of games. You've got games from first-party developers, third-party developers, multi-platform, platform games, redone games of new games. You know, there's a great variety of stuff here and definitely something for everyone as far as genres are concerned. So I'm definitely really looking forward to more information on the PlayStation 5, but I just wanted to give you guys the nitty gritty details on what we know so far about the system and maybe some things to expect from it. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of all this. Are you looking forward to the PlayStation 5 or are you just going to skip out on the system? And if you are, then why did you watch till the end of the video? I mean, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much, but you know, you might want to watch another video <laughs> that I have on the channel. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, like I said, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.